Tonight is Thursday night. This is our night we teach on human reason, the carnal mind of mankind. We've been looking at Exodus chapter 19 and verse 20. What we're also doing is we're learning our Bibles on these Thursday nights so we can be able to tell the story which was commanded us of how God delivered and brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. It was commanded them and it was told them that they should teach this story to their children in the future when their children should act, when their children would ask them. Now we believe that those Hebrews in the Bible was of a dark skin race. We believe that they was people of color as our educational system in the United States has taught us. They call them people of color. You don't find that in the Bible, but this has been taught to us in our society. We're talking about Hebrews. We're not talking about Jews. Abraham was not a Jew. Isaac was not a Jew. Israel was not a Jew. We know the Jews come out of the lineage of Judah. That's where they come from. The Bible tells us the scripture shall not depart from, uh, from Judah, neither a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. When Shiloh come, that was the end of the Jews. The Bible does not call Jesus a Jew. It calls him a Galilean. That's what it calls him. That's what it tells us. It was prophesied in the 11th chapter of the book of Isaiah that he should be called a Galilean. He was called a Nazarene. A Nazarene is one that has come out of Galilee. And so we know that the law was given to the Hebrews, not to the Jewish race, not only to those out of the lineage of Judah. We talked about the lineage of Judah. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 11. When we talk about the lineage of Judah, we're talking about Everybody knows that David was the son of God. But according to the scriptures, he was called a Nazarene or a Galilean, according to the scripture. As I said last Sunday, if he would have made Bethlehem Judah, the law could not have been fulfilled. The law had to be fulfilled, what was prophesied concerning him, that he should be called a Nazarene. The Jews don't make too much of fuss about that today. They won't even mention it. They continually talk about them as the Jew. So let's turn our Bible to 1 Kings. Let's look at 1 Kings chapter 11. Let's look at 1 Kings chapter 11. And this is what we need to know. We need to learn our Bibles. We need to know our Bibles so we can be able to tell the story. We look at 1 Kings chapter 11. We look at 1 Kings chapter 11, and it tells us King Solomon loved many strange wives, many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go into them. Go into who? Many strange women of Pharaoh. Women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, Hittites. Those were the women. They were not supposed to go in too. We had verse number two again. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely the Lord said they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon claimed unto these in love. So we turn our Bibles, we look over at chapter, chapter, chapter number 12. We look at chapter number 12. Let's look at 12, well then let's look, at, no let's stay over here for a minute. Let's go back, let's go back. Let's go back. I need to read a few verses. I need to read a few verses over here. Let's go back. And let's look at verse number. Let's look, let's read down to verse number 13. Verse 
number 3, 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 3. Now, we are going to be dealing with 11 and 12. Okay, church? Okay. All right. I don't want nobody to get lost in that verse number 2. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. Clave unto who? The daughter of Pharaoh in verse number 1. Women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites. He had 700 wives, princesses, 300 concubines. His wives turned the ways hard because God said that they would. That's why his heart turned away, turned his, turned away his heart. Because God said it was, and God knew that he was corrupt in the flesh, and his mind was perverse. That's what God knew already. Okay, the last when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. Now, when the Bible says, his heart was not perfect towards God. David never did worship false gods. David's heart never was turned away from worshiping the true God. Never did David worship false gods. Never. But Solomon went. Tell you what he did. Solomon went after Ashtoreth. Ashtoreth. David never did that. That was one of the Sidonian gods. The goddess of the Zidonians. David never did go after other gods. Never in his career. After Malcolm, Malcolm, or Molech. Malcolm, Malcolm, or Molech. Malcolm, Malcolm, or Molech. You can find those terminologies or those names in your two Babylons. The abomination of the Ammonites. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord. Went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. David never went after other gods or goddesses. Then did Solomon build the high place for Shemach. David never did none of this. The abomination of Moab and the hill that is before Jerusalem. And for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. You see, Molech in verse number 7 is the same as the Milcom in verse number 5. The Molech in verse number 7 is the same as the Milcom in verse number 5. In verse number 5, it says, Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. In verse number 7, it says, Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. The children of Ammon are Ammonites. The children of Ammon are Ammonites. You got the children of Ammon, which are Ammonites. And Milcom, Molech, same thing, different terminology. Don't be confused. Don't you confuse it. I just told you what it was. So don't you, in your mind, put another interpretation on it. The Bible already told us who he was. Likewise did he fall to strange wives. What did he do for all his strange wives? He built a high place for them. Verse number seven. What did he do? What did he do for all his strange wives? Did Solomon build a high place for them? Verse number eight again, because I'm teaching y'all how to read your Bible. So don't you go ahead of me because you don't understand. And then when I ask you, you're going to tell me something different. Likewise, likewise mean in the same way. He did the same thing for all the strange wives. And the strange wives is told to us in verse number one, if you pay attention to your Bible, it says strange wives. And the strange wives are mentioned to us in verse number one. The strange wives are the daughter of Pharaoh, the Moabites, women of the Moabites, women of the Ammonites, women of the Edomites, women of the Zidonians, and women of the Hittites. What did Solomon do for all his strange wives? He built a high place for them in verse number 7. He built a high place for Shemash, the abomination of the Moab, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Likewise, 
did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their God. What did he do for all his strange wives? He built a half place for them. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned away from the Lord God of Israel. And I told y'all that last week, didn't I? I told you this last week, which had appeared unto him twice. I told you this last week. He never did appear unto David, but he appeared twice unto Solomon. You want to find out the separation and how the Israel was separated, how did they became divided. A divided house cannot stand. How did they become divided? This is how Israel became divided. This is how Israel became divided. This is how you get your Jews, and this is how you get the ten northern tribes, Israel, or Ephraim, or the house of Joseph, which would be Manasseh and Ephraim. That's who Jesus came to. When Jesus came to the lost sheep of Israel, Jesus came to the ten tribes. That's who he came to, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's who Jesus came to when he came. He did not go down to Jerusalem to the Jews. No, he did not. The Bible does not teach that. All right. So the Lord was angry, was angry with Solomon. With verse number 9, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. He appeared to him in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse number 5, and he appeared to him in 1 Kings chapter 9, verse number 2. 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse number 5. This is the story our children need to know. We need to be able to tell this story. 1 Kings chapter 3. Look at verse 3, chapter 3. We're looking at the two appearances of Solomon. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse number 5. It says, In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. God said, Ask what I shall give thee. We look at chapter 9. We look at chapter 9. We look at chapter 9. We look at verse, verse number 2. Verse two, number 2. That is, we'll read down to it. And the past when Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord and the king's house and all Solomon's desire, which he was pleased to do, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time as he had appeared unto him at Gibeon. So right there at that verse, you put 1 Kings chapter 3, verse number 5. Right where it says, why is I hear these pages turning? You guys ain't there yet? 1 Kings. You should be at 1 Kings 9 and 2. And then 9 and 2, you put 3 and 5. So all you have to do is put 3 and 5, and you underline the Lord appeared. The Lord appeared. Those are the two appearances. They tell you the second time. All right. So we should be back at 1 Kings chapter 11. All right, come on, Mama Ronnie, you lost. No, I was trying to get to uh, 1 Kings uh, 3. What? Nine what? To put. No, 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 you're supposed to be at 1 Kings 3 and 5. Go to 1 Kings 3 and 5. What? Go back to 1 Kings 3 and 5. Go right. 1 Kings 3 and 5. is at the top of page 390. I'm there. All right, what you want to do there? Put 1 Kings 9 and 2. 9 and 2. All right, then go ahead and do it because we need to move on. We're trying to wait okay, for Okay, I'm there. All I right, then we should be back at 1 Kings. We should be back at 1 Kings. Chapter 11. Are you there? Yes. Alright. So I'm at verse number 10. And had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded him. That's why the Lord was angry with him in verse number 9. Verse number 9 tells us, you don't have to be wondering, why was God angry at Solomon? If you pay attention to your Bibles, it tells you why God was angry at Solomon. The Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. What is the thing that God commanded him? That he should not go after other gods. What is the thing that God commanded him? That he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded him. And when you don't keep the commandments of the Lord, it angers the Lord. When you don't do what the Bible tells you to do, it angers the Lord. You see what's going on in this world today. That is 
because God is able. You see what happened over in, in, in we see what happened over in Florida. Why? Is these things happening? God is angry. Because people, mankind does not keep the commandment of God. You see how he's how he visited Florida? Why? Because God is angry, church. God is angry. They provoke God angry not keeping the commandments of the Lord. When you don't keep the commandments of the Lord, you provoke God to anger. And God is no respect of person when it comes to judgment. It goes, it goes for us just as it goes for them. That's what got Israel in trouble. That's what's wrong with that Jew today. He think he got, he got a hold upon God and that God is not going to visit him for his sin. He think because God, he chose Abraham, that Jew is his Jew to think he is above judgment. But when it comes to judgment, the Bible tells us there is no respect for person. And the Jew, for those that's in authority and position, think they're above the judgment of God. No man's above the judgment of God. Nobody. Not one individual in the world. With verse 10. And had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. That's what God commanded him. He told him that. He told him not to go after other gods. He appeared to him twice and he told him the same thing, but he did not listen to God. He went after other gods. He went after other gods anyway. And God commanded him not to do that. That's what he told him. He commanded him. He appeared to him twice and he told him. And Solomon did not keep the word of God. He did not do what God told him to do. He went in America. His lust took over. His corrupt man and his perverse man took over. God judged him for that. Okay. We look at 1 Kings chapter 9. The 1 Kings chapter 9. Look at 1 Kings chapter 9. Look at 1 Kings chapter 9. Amen. It came to pass when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord and the king's house and all Solomon's desire, which he was pleased to do, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time as he had appeared unto him at Gibeon. The Lord said unto him, I have heard your prayer, your supplication, and you that you have made before me. I have sanctified, hallowed this house, hallowed be that day which thou hast built. To put my name there forever in my eyes, my heart shall be there perpetually. If you will walk before me, if based upon the condition, if you will walk before me as David your father walked, in integrity of heart and uprightness to do, to do. Keep telling y'all that it's the problem with mankind. This is where we at all the time. This is God speaking to Solomon. This is not Solomon, a man talking. This is God speaking directly to Solomon. Just like he spoke to the children of Israel on the mount in Exodus chapter 20. The Lord appeared to Solomon. That's verse number 2. I'm at verse number 2. I'm at 1 Kings chapter 9. Verse number two, the, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time as he had appeared to him and given him. This is the Lord talking directly to Solomon, not a prophet, like I told you. The Lord said unto him, I have heard your prayer and supplication that you have made before me. I have hallowed this house which you have built to put my name there forever. My eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. And if you will walk before me as David your father walked, in integrity of heart, in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded you, and will keep my statutes, my judgments, and I will establish the throne of the kingdom of Israel forever, as I promised to David your father, saying, There should not fail me a man upon the throne of Israel. But if you shall turn from following me, ye or your children, and would not keep my cup, my commandments, and my statutes, and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them of this house which I have hallowed for my name, will I cast out of my sight, and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. And at this house, which is high, everyone that passes by it shall be astonished, and shall hiss, and they shall say, Why hath the Lord done this unto this land, and to this house? 
And they shall ask, because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought them forth out of forth from their who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt, they have taken hold upon other gods, have worshipped them, and served them. Therefore have the Lord brought upon them all this evil. The Bible tells us why God brought evil upon Israel. Why did God bring evil upon Israel? Because they will suit the Lord their God, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt, and have taken hold upon other gods, have worshipped them, served them. Therefore, for that reason, therefore means for that reason. That's what therefore means. We need to understand something particularly about this, what we're reading. God said this, not a prophet. A prophet did not prophesy this. This is God speaking directly to Solomon. This is God. These are God's words. These are not no words that a prophet came and told him. This is God speaking directly to Solomon. This is what we don't be understanding about the Bible when we read it. Many don't explain it properly. This is, these are God's words. God tells us why he brought evil upon Israel. He starts speaking to him in verse number three. The Lord said unto him. That's exactly what it said. The Lord started talking to him, and the Lord speaks to him, verse number four, verse number five, verse number six, verse number seven, verse number eight. That's the Lord speaking. Get to verse number 10, it said, it came to pass. The Lord started speaking to Solomon in verse number nine. The Lord said those words. Why he broke evil upon Israel. And they shall ask, because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt, have taken hold upon other gods, have worshipped them, served them. Therefore have the Lord brought upon them all this evil. There's more evil done upon a black man in the United States of America than any other individual it is in the world. And why? Because God brought us out of, brought forth our fathers out of the land of Egypt, we have taken a thought, taken hold upon other gods. We have taken hold upon them. We have worshipped them. We have served them. Therefore have the Lord brought upon us all this evil. It's never been evil done upon the people more than it has been done upon the so-called African American. Or the black man. Or the colored man. Or the Negro. Or the nigger. Whatever word they want to use and call it. People don't understand this and they don't teach it. Solomon was a black man. That's who Solomon was. Solomon was a black man. And if Solomon was a black man, and he was. Solomon was a black man, and he was. And he had children. According to the script, all the children that came out of Solomon, those was Israelites. I wish I had a witness. Amen. Now, maybe y'all didn't understand that. Amen. I wish I had a witness. Amen. They came out of him, they were Israelites. Amen. <coughs> That's what they was. It was lineage of Judah. <coughs> Hello? Amen. Amen. David's son. David's son. I hope y'all understood still what I just said. Yeah. <coughs> but it's not part of said that. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. He had 700 wives, 300 concubines. Uh, amen. You can imagine how many children he had, how many of those babies. Was there? Yeah. Then you gotta understand those that come out of them is Israelites too. Because yeah. the lineage is determined by the father, not the mother. Yeah. In America, it's determined by the mother. Yeah. In the Middle East, it's determined by the father. In the scriptures, it's determined by the father. So we go back over to First Kings chapter eleven, verse number ten. We're looking at the separation of the of the house of Israel. The house of Israel is the house of Jacob. When I say Jacob, Israel, I'm talking about, I said house. When I say house of, house means family. It's the word by ye. It means family. By ye, house. By ye means family. That's what it means. When I say house, 
say house, H-O-U-S-E, say house of Israel, house of David, the word by yeet, by yeet, it means a family, that's what it means, it means a family, that's what it is, when I say house of Jacob, Jacob's name was changed to Israel, his real spiritual name, the name was given to him by God, that's where that name come from, it didn't come from man, it came from God, it came from God, with verse number 10, and had commanded him concerning this thing with 1 Kings chapter 11, verse number 10. And had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go out to other gods. We read that in 1 Kings chapter 9, verse number 6, verse number 1 through, we read it 1 through 9, 1 through 9, or 2 through 9, yeah, 1 through 9, 1 Kings chapter 9, verses 1 through 9, the, verse, the key verse is verse number 9, verse number 9. Told him that verse number nine, first Kings nine and nine. Well, verse number ten, he told him. Verse number eleven, wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, for as much as this is done of you, you did it. You did it. You did it. You did it. For as much as this is done of you, you have not kept my covenant, my statutes, which I commanded thee, I will surely bring the kingdom from thee and will give it to your servant. Notwithstanding in your days, I will not do it. I'm not going to do it while you are alive. When you read it in the Bible, and it says, notwithstanding in your days, that means while you are alive. Notwithstanding in thy days, I will not do it. For David, my father, your father, say, but I will bring it out of the hand of your son. How be it? I will not rent away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to your son for David, my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem, sake which I have chosen. All right, we go over to chapter number 12. We go over to chapter number 12. We go to chapter number 12. We're not going to read on chapter number 12. We're going to start in verse number 16. Amen. This is the rending of the king. We have 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 16. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not to them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. Talking about real born. To your tents, O Israel. Now see to your own house, David. So Israel, ten northern tribes, ten tribes, ten northern tribes. So Israel. Right up under Israel, you need to put ten northern tribes. So Israel, ten northern tribes. That's what you need to put when it says Israel. You need to put ten northern tribes. So Israel, right up under you, all you have to write is ten northern tribes. But as for the children of Israel, which dwelt in the cities of Judah, real born reigned over them. So you got some of the uh, tribes in the city of Judah, all of them not with uh, real born. Then King real born sent Aram, who was over the tribute, over the taxes, and all Israel stoned him with stones. The ten northern tribes. The ten northern tribes stoned Adoram with stones, that he died. Therefore, King Rehoboam made speed to get up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel, the ten northern tribes, rebelled against the house of David unto this day. They are not called Jews. They're called Israel. Now they are separated. It came to pass in verse 20, when all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, that all Israel sent and called Jeroboam unto the congregation and made Jeroboam king over all Israel. There was none that followed the house or the family of David, but the tribe of Judah only. When Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, Rehoboam assembled all the family of Judah and of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin, 180,000 chosen men, which were warriors, to fight against the house of Israel. They separated. 
You got the two northern, two southern tribes, Judah and Benjamin, fighting against the ten northern tribes. The ten northern tribes of headed by Rehoboam to bring the kingdom. I mean Jeroboam, Jeroboam to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. But the word of God came unto Shemaiah, the man from God, saying, Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Thus said the Lord, You shall not go up nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Return every man to his house, for this thing is from me. What thing is from God? The thing that is from God is the separation of the ten northern tribes Amen. from Benjamin, from, from the separation of the ten northern tribes from the house of David, leaving David only with his little brother Benjamin. Why is that thing of God? Why did that happen? Huh? Why did that happen? It happened because King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Edonians, and Gittites. And what did he do? He worshiped strange gods. He commanded him, verse number 10, concerning this, this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But Solomon kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, Mom, uh, where, where am I at? Where, where, where am I at, y'all? Thank you very much. I don't know why y'all not there. I don't know why y'all not there. Those of you who's not there. Okay? I'm going back to the scripture again. And I keep telling y'all, I shouldn't have to tell you where to go. You should be paying attention to your Bible. I'm at, I'm at, I'm let, I'm going back to 1 Kings chapter 12. I'm at 1 Kings chapter 12. Yes, I am. I'm going back. I'm not going to tell you. You're supposed to learn your Bible. I'm at 1 Kings chapter 12. I'm teaching you your Bible. I'm not reading this stuff and y'all are not supposed to be remembering. You're supposed to be remembering while I'm reading. You're supposed to be paying attention. I'm at 1 Kings chapter 12. I'm at verse number 24. Amen. I'm at 1 Kings chapter 12. Amen. I'm at verse 24. Amen. Amen. Thus said the Lord, You shall not go up to a fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Who is this speaking? We had go to verse 22. This is Shemaiah, the man of God. It says, But the word of God, why is you turning? I said, Go to verse 22. Why? You should be at 1 Kings 12, 22. Where your Bible should be at. You should be turning no pages. Nobody should be turning no pages. You don't have to turn no pages. I'm at first, I'm, I'm going to do it again. I'm starting over. Because I'll be hearing pages turning. Pages should not be turning. I'm at 1 Kings. I'm at chapter 12. I'm at verse 24. It says, Thus said the Lord, You shall not go up nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. He said this. I'm talking about the word said. You got to listen. He said this through the man of God in verse 22. So that means you go to verse 22. But the word of God came unto Shemaiah, the man of God saying, Speak unto Rehoboam the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the remnant of the people. S-A-Y-I-N-G. It's, it's the third time we have a derivative of the word say you got to pay attention. Say, thus said the Lord. He said what, he's, what, I, what we're going to read through the man of God in verse 22. Amen. So 
that you should be in verse 22. But the word of God came into the Shemai, the man of God saying, Rose, that's what the problem is. You don't pay attention to the word say. That's what the problem is, man. You don't pay a word, pay attention to the word say. That's what the problem is, Glenn and Mama Rhonda. That's what your problem is, Carolyn and JD. Y'all don't be paying attention to who's talking. The man of God is talking. The word came to the man of God, not to the king real born. Say, you go tell real born, don't go up there and fight them. I did this. This is what y'all don't be understanding because y'all don't be paying attention to the word say and say and it said. You got to know who's talking. The one who's talking is the man from God. He is the one doing the talking. Again, for your understanding, not mine. I'm at verse 22. The word of God came unto Shemaiah, the man of God. Say it. Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and unto all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the remnant of the people of Israel. Right? Amen. Because it tells us in verse number 17, it tells us in verse number 17, that means you're supposed to move to 17. You don't have to turn no pages. All you got to do is move your ass to verse number 17. I didn't tell you to turn it to a book or nothing. You do that. You go to verse number 17. It says, but as for the children of Israel would dwell in the cities of Judah. That's the remnant of the people. All of them didn't go. But it says all the children of Israel went. Majority of them went with real born. And as for the children of Israel... I'm at verse 17, which dwelt in the cities of Judah, real born reign over them. We get down back to verse number 22. We're back at verse 22. No pages don't need to turn. All you need to do is shift your eyes. <coughs> We're still in the same story. The word of the Lord, the word of God came to Shemaiah, the son of God, the son of God. Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speaking to real born. The son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Thus said the Lord, You shall not go up. That's a command. You shall not. That's a command. You shall not go up, nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Return every man to his house, for this thing is from me. What thing is from God? The thing that's from God is Solomon. The thing that is from God is Solomon love. You when it turn to the scripture, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. That's why I didn't tell you to turn to no scripture. You should know where's it at. Where's you going? Where's you going? You don't know where's it at, do you? You don't. You, you don't know what Solomon love many strange wives at, do you? Do you? No, Talking no, to you. No, 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 you don't. It's in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse number 1. That's why he called no scriptures. That's why he called no scriptures. Because you should know it. That's why he said nothing. That's why I said, this thing is from me. And I said, what thing is from God? Solomon loved many strange wives. You should know what that scripture is. We just read it. But you're depending on me to call out the scripture all the time. So that's why I didn't call out the scripture. So I did everything over again so you can understand why. You need to learn your Bible. You need to learn your Bible. You still don't know your Bible. You still don't know these stories. You need to learn your Bible. Amen. You need to know your Bible. Amen. 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 <clears throat> I don't care what nobody say. These things was written for our what? Learning. Learning. How you going to know him and you don't know your Bible? He told you to learn from him. You need to know your Bible. So I didn't call no scripture. I know what I was doing. I did it purposely. You should know what you just read. That's why they call the scripture. What thing is from God? The separation of, the, uh, of Benjamin and Judah from the ten northern tribes of Israel. That is from God. What thing is from God? 
Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Ed Edomites, Zidonians, Hittites. Verse number, verse number 9. The Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of you, and you have not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I commanded you, I will surely rend the kingdom from you and will give it to your servant. We go back over to 1 Kings chapter 12 and we look at verse number 24. Amen. And it says, Thus said the Lord, You shall not go up nor fight against your brother, the children of Israel. Return every man to his house, for this thing is from me. We turn back over. First case chapter eleven and verse number and verse number eleven. It says, Wherefore the Lord said to Solomon, For as much as this is done of you, that you have not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I commanded thee, I will surely bring the kingdom from thee and will give it to your servant. That's the thing that is from God. Why? Because King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Adonians, and Hittites. Verse number 9, the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel. How was his heart turned from the Lord God of Israel? Verse number 2, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, you shall not go into them, neither shall they come in to you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods, Solomon clave unto these in love. Verse number four. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. His heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. Verse number eleven. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, for as much as this, as this is done of thee, thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee and will give it to your servant. Verse number 13, How be it, I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to your son, <coughs> to your son for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. One tribe to a son. We get over to 1 Kings chapter 12. We're looking at one tribe to a son. We get to 1 Kings chapter 12. We get to 1 Kings chapter 12. It tells us in verse number 20, came to pass when all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again. He had just came out of Egypt. <coughs> that they sent to call Jeroboam into the congregation. And the congregation made Jeroboam king over all Israel. There was none that followed the house of David but the, but the tribe of Judah only. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin. We go back to 1 Kings chapter 11. We go back to 1 Kings chapter 11 verse number 13. How be it, I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to your son, the Solomon's son, Rehoboam. We go back to 1 Kings chapter 12. We look at verse number 21. This is Solomon's son, Rehoboam. When Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the, with, with, connected, with, means connected. I mean, verse number what? 21. That's believe it. Everybody should be in 21. With the tribe of Benjamin, we go back over. First Kings, chapter 11, verse 13, that's the one tribe. 
1 Kings 11, 13, will give one tribe. That one tribe, we go back to 1 Kings, we go back to 1 Kings, verse number 21, the one tribe is the tribe of Benjamin. Now, if you don't see that, something is wrong with you. Something is wrong with you. I literally mean that. Something is wrong with you. The one tribe that he gave to Solomon's son, Rehoboam, was the tribe of Benjamin. I just showed you in the Bible. Verse number 22. Let me tell you the minute you make your mistake. You say, I'm going to write this down and put it here so I won't forget, and you forget every time. That's what you do. He said, I'm going to write this down. I'm going to mark this and put it here right now. You know, so I won't forget. You forget it every time. Even when you got it marked in your body. And you don't be paying attention. You're too busy trying to write. All you have to do is read your scripture. You need to read it, look at it, and be in your eyes. So we get 1 Kings 12, 21. And when Rehoboam was coming to the Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Jews with the tribe of Benjamin. 144,000 of men which were warriors to fight against the house of Israel to bring the kingdom again to, to real born the son of Solomon. But the word of God came to Shemai, the son of God, the, the man of God, saying, Speak unto real born the son of Solomon, king of Judah, real born the son of Solomon. See, I have to teach you like this because some of you don't really get it. It says, real born the son of Solomon. We go back over to 1 Kings. 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 And it's, he's talking to Solomon. He said, how be it, I'm at 1 Kings 11, 13, how be it, I will not rent away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to your son. We go back over, we go back over, to 1 Kings 12, 23, it says, Speak unto real born the son of Solomon. We go back to 1 Kings. And we look at verse number 13. How be it, I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to your son, that is real born, that's real born. It tells us who the son is. It tells us who the son is. In 1 Kings chapter 12, 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 23. Speak unto real born the son of Solomon. The son of Solomon. The son of Solomon. Real born the son of Solomon. So tell us who the son is. We open it. We go back to 1 Kings chapter 11. Look at verse number. Look at verse number 13. How be it? I will not read all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to your son. For David, my servant, said, Talk to Solomon. He said, I will give one tribe to your son. We get back over here. 1 Kings chapter 12. My last time going to this. It says, speaking to real born, and at verse 23, speaking to real born, the son of Solomon, king of Judah. Real born is the son of Solomon. Stop. Real born is the king of Judah. Because y'all don't know how to read scripture. It does not say real born. Speaking to real born, the son of Solomon. Solomon, the king of Judah. Solomon is dead. Go over to chapter Go to chapter 11. Go to chapter 11. You look at verse number 40. Chapter 11, I said verse 40. Solomon sought therefore to kill Jeroboam. Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt, to Shishak, king of Egypt, and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. Solomon is dead. And all, all the rest of the Acts of Solomon, all that he did and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of the Acts of Solomon? And the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was 40 years. Solomon slept with his fathers, was buried in the city of David his father, and real born his son reigned in his stead. So, because many of you over here, when you read it, 
And it gets over here in 1 Kings 12, 23. It says, speak to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah. Some of you thinking that, that the king of Judah is Solomon. Solomon is dead. That's because you just don't know how to read. That's all it is. Just don't know how to read. So the son of, so the king of Judah is real born because Solomon is dead. It tells you Solomon died in 1 Kings chapter 11. Verse number 40 through 43. Tells you Solomon died. Okay. This is the split of the house of Israel. I'm not talking about the house of Israel, I'm talking about the house of Jacob. We have 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 23. Speaking to real born the son of we have 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 23. Amen. Speaking to real born the son of Solomon, the king of Judah, and to all the house of Judah, Judah and Benjamin, and to the remnant of the people say. You see, it's a comma there. You don't stop reading. It's a comma. Thus says the Lord. You shall not go up nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Return every man to his house, for this end is from me. And then hearken therefore to the word of the Lord, and return, and return to the heart according to the word of the Lord from who? Shemaiah, the man of God. From Shemaiah, the man of God. I'm at verse 24. Everybody should be at 24. Everybody. Thus said the Lord, you shall not go up nor fight against your brother. The children of Israel return every man to his house. This thing is from me. But if what thing is from him? The rending of the king from uh, rending of the kingdoms from out of the hand of David, out of the house of David, because of Solomon loving those many strange wives. This thing is from me. They hearkened therefore to the word of the Lord and returned to depart according to the word of the Lord from the man of God, Shemaiah, in verse 22. But the word of God came unto Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, verse 22, why is you turning page, pages, my brother? You should be turning no pages. You should have been at verse 24. You should have been at 1 Kings 24. Thus said the Lord, you shall not go up nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Return every man to his house, for this thing is from me. That is the rending of the, the, the house, the ten northern tribes, the separating of the ten northern tribes from the house of David. That is, that is from God. Nobody need to turn their Bible. The thing is the rending of the house, the ten northern tribes, the rending of the house of Jacob. Jacob is Israel. The separating of the ten northern tribes from Benjamin and Judah. That was from God. Nobody should be turning no paper. The thing from him is that God separated the ten northern tribes from David and from Benjamin. That's what he did. Because Solomon loved many strange wives. So he ran the kingdom. It says he ran the kingdom. He ran. R-E-N-D. Ran the kingdom. He ran the kingdom. He ran the house. The house. Of Jacob. That's what he did. He separated. He had David and Benjamin. That's what it says. He, gave, he kept them with Benjamin. Then you had the ten northern tribes. So you got two here. You got ten here. Make 12. And so this thing, this thing, thing from me. He is the Lord. Many of like, you can't read. That's, that's it. You, know, you don't be paying no attention. You're not paying attention to the scripture. The rest, that's the thing that's from the Lord. This is from me. This is from me. That's from me. I did that. Why? Because some of you love me in strange wives. So simple. That is from me. I did that. Because Solomon loved many strange wives in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 1, and he served other gods, which I told him not to serve when I appeared to him two times. That's so simple. So he provoked me to anger. So when he provoked me to anger, I said, that's it. I'm taking ten of them tribes away from me. And 
I'm going to take them all. I'm just going to take 10. I'm going to leave you with one because I'm going to keep my promise that I made to my servant there. And that's what happened. That's how they got separated. Now, we've been looking at Exodus chapter 19. Let's go back to Exodus. Let's go back to Exodus. That's what we're going to look at. These stories are supposed to be told. These stories are supposed to be handed down from generation to generation to generation to generation to our children, and we have not done that. So we've been looking at 1 Kings chapter 19. If you're looking at 1 Kings chapter 19, I mean Exodus, Exodus 19 and 20. Thank you very much. We've been looking at Exodus 19 and 20. God bring the children of Israel out of, out of Egypt. When he bring the children of Israel out of Egypt, he bring them to a mount so that <coughs> he bring them to the mount so that they can serve him. That's what he told Pharaoh. Tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they may serve me. I want them to come in the wilderness and <coughs> serve me. That's what he told. So we get to Exodus. And in Exodus, in Exodus chapter 19, we should have the understanding of this now. We want we understand it that Moses did not speak Exodus 20 to the children of Israel. Exodus 20 was spoken to the children of Israel directly, just like the Lord appeared to Solomon. Just like the Lord appeared to Solomon, just like the Lord appeared to the children of to Moses and the children of Israel in Exodus chapter 20. We've been through this and we go through this so we can understand. We look at verse number, we look at verse number 16. We're going to look at verse number 16. In verse number 16, Exodus chapter 19, verse 16. Exodus chapter 19, <clears throat> verse number 16. It came to pass on the third day in the morning. In the morning. It was in the morning. All, every word in here is important. Every word. It was in the morning that there were thunderings and lightning. So it was morning time when the thunders and the lightnings, a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. They was not blowing the trump. The trump had to be being blown by angels. But no people blowing no trumpet. Oh, you didn't see that, did you? What you thought the people was blowing? Nobody blowing the trumpet. The angels had to be blowing the trumpet. The trumpet sounded long. It had to be angels. The angels had to be blowing the trumpet. It came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings, a thick cloud upon the mount, the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud. So that all the people that was in the camp trembled. The voice of the trumpet. The voice of the trumpet. Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. The people is not blowing the trumpet. Moses bringing the people. The people, Moses brought forth the people out of the camp. Ain't no people blowing no trumpet. Ain't no voice of the trumpet from the people. Had to be the angels. The voice of the trumpet exceeding loud. So that all the people that was in the camp trembled. Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the neither part of the mount. Mount Sinai was all together on smoke. Why? Because the Lord descended up on it in fire. Why was the mountain, why was the mountain all together of smoke? Because the Lord descended up on it in fire. What happened to what happened? What happened to the mountain when the, the Lord descended up on it in fire? It smoked. That's what I because those are questions I, I ask y'all. I ask y'all questions and you don't know how to answer. I say, I, I was saying, why was the I say uh, because the Lord descended, why was the why was Mount Sinai altogether smoke? Answer, because the Lord descended upon here in, in fire. When the Lord descended up on the mount in fire, what happened to the mount? It was a smoke. That's what I be asking you. 
But you can't answer because you don't be paying attention to Scripture. If you pay attention to Scripture, when I ask you questions according to your exhortation, you can answer. But when you don't read your exhortation, you don't know how to answer. And that's the same way I ask y'all in your exhortation. <coughs> I'm studying these problems when people ask some questions. Good because they don't read the exhortations and they don't read their commentaries, Ernest Payne. That's why it'd be a problem. Because they don't understand what they have said, Ernest Payne. That's why you'd be saying the problems like that. So that's the way I ask the question. And they don't read because they don't know how the word associate. I said, what is, I said, the, and, and Mount Sinai was all together on smoke. The Lord descended up on it. They, if somebody were to send me this exhortation, right here, Ernest A, it says, and, and Mount Sinai was all together on smoke because the Lord descended up on it in fire. And I asked the question, uh, and I asked the question, what happened when the Lord descended up on Mount Sinai? Mount Sinai was all together smoke. That's all you spoke to say. That's where you get your answer from. Mm -hmm. But people don't be paying attention. Don't be paying attention to what's in their exhortation. And the words be right in their exhortation. Out of the scripture, or either out of their commentary. Just I, I will use the word to sin. And they don't even see it. That's because y'all don't be paying attention. It said, Mount Sinai was all together on smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace. I, and I asked the question, what was the smoke of the furnace? And they don't say this. I say, and I said, what is the, what was the smoke of the furnace? And I can ask them, what was the smoke of a, what was the smoke of the furnace? The Lord descended upon it in fire. The, the smoke, I, I said the smoke of a furnace. The smoke there on the city. What was the smoke? I said, what is the smoke? What was the smoke of a furnace? Mount Sinai altogether a uh, smoke. Smoke, smoke, smoke. It said the smoke. It said, it said the smoke thereof. The smoke thereof. What is thereof? What do thereof refer back to, man? What do thereof in that verse? The smoke thereof. What do that refer back to, Mama Rhonda? The smoke thereof. The smoke was coming look at the scripture. See what I'm saying? See what I mean? She didn't look at the script. It says the smoke thereof. I mean, verse 18, it says, <laughs> the smoke thereof. What do thereof refer back to? To the fire. No, I don't. The smoke thereof refer back to what, y'all? Outside now. Outside, outside now was all together on, on, on a smoke. Because the Lord descended. Up on Mount Sinai and fire. And the smoke of that mountain, it refers, they say Mount Sinai was all together on smoke. It don't say Mount Sinai was all together on fire. Don't say. <laughs> don't say the mountain was on fire. Yeah. Yeah. Say the mountain was on smoke. Yeah. Don't say the mountain was on fire. Say smoke. He saw him as power. What you say, Harris? You be best to leave. He said, 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 Oh, well, well. You're just smoking. Ain't no fire. Oh, well. <laughs> he came down on it. <laughs> yes, he did. He made it. He made it. The fire just sitting on the mountain, but the mountain not burning up. Just smoking. Mm -hmm. I wish I had a witness. He made it. I wish I had a witness. Yeah. You know, you said how many times you used the word smoke in there? Yeah. You used the word smoke three times. And Mount Sinai was all together on the smoke. Because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke of the mountain ascended as the smoke of a furnace. And the smoke went up. Ascended. If you don't know what ascended is, you ain't there, you know. I said, what happened with the smoke on the mountain? Or I'll put it there. What went up on the mountain? I know it. And before I, 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 I ask you this question right here. But see, you don't know what ascended means, you're in trouble. I say, what, what, what? 
I said, what? I said, what went up on the mouth? You be like, I don't understand. <laughs> I said, what went up on the mouth? All you got to do is go find the word mouth, don't you? Find the word mouth. If you look at your scripture and you find the word mouth, it'll tell you what was on smoke. Mouth, side mouth, it's all together. Mm -hmm. Up on a smoke. Because the Lord descended up on it. What is it? The mouth. So you don't know how to relate it back. It is the mouth. So it goes back to the mouth. In fight. And the smoke thereof. The smoke what? He already told you what the smoke on the mouth and the smoke of the mouth. The smoke thereof. A sin. Right? Right. The smoke thereof. Right? Yeah. The fire is on the mountain. Yes, it is. So the smoke on the mountain. Yes, it is. So the smoke thereof ascended at the smoke of a furnace, right? Mm -hmm. And the whole mount quake greatly did. Yes, it did. When the voice of the trumpet sounded what? Long. And wax what? Loud. And loud. What happened? Moses faith. faith. And God answered him. Moses, I say, who did Moses speak to? I ask you that. Oh, oh, oh. I say, who did Moses speak oh, to? Oh, 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 oh. You probably, you'll be sad. Yeah. That scripture don't say Moses yep. spoke to nobody. Yes, it does. No. Yep. Mm -hmm. God asked. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, that scripture don't say God, Moses yeah, spoke yeah. to nobody. Yeah. He did. Yep. Say Moses spake. God asked him. If God asks it, who do you want to speak to? That was your God. Remember yeah. from the first book we went to Hebrews chapter what? 12. 12, 21. We found out what Moses said, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Say, the Lord came down upon what? Moses. Moses. And I asked you the question. I said, what came down? I said, what came down upon Mount Sinai in verse number uh what came down? How did the Lord come down upon? Right, they said the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai at verse 20. I said, how did the Lord come down on Mount, Mount Sinai? How did he come down on Mount Sinai, Glenn? How did the Lord come down upon Mount Sinai, Glenn? How did the Lord come down on Mount Sinai, Glenn? How did the Lord come down upon Mount Sinai, Glenn? And he didn't come down to Mount Sinai, no thunder or no lightning. How did the Lord come down to Mount Sinai? Hell? The Lord descended upon it in fire. Thank you. So you got to know what descend means. Descend and come down is the same thing. Descend and come down, come down is the same thing. If you don't know what descend means, he came out. He came down in fire. It said the Lord descended upon it in fire. It said, and the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai. I say, how did the Lord come down? In verse number 18, it says, because the Lord descended up on it in fire. He came down in fire. Yes, he did. The fire represent him. Yes, he did. Amen. So it's a big cloud. What? And a big cloud upon the mountain. In verse number 16. Amen. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mouth. That's the thunder, that's the sound. Okay. That ain't the fire. Okay. Ain't no fire. A thick cloud of falling. He ain't the hell. That's the one I'm with you. I know it. That ain't the one I taught you. No. <laughs> that ain't the one I started reading at. No. Why I started reading at church? 18, 16, didn't I? Yeah. 16. Stop reading at 16, didn't I? Stop reading at 16. Yeah, I stopped reading at 16. It said, it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a big cloud upon the mouth. Right? Right. It, didn't it say the Lord down there? No. Didn't it say the Lord was down there? No. Right? No, it didn't. Right? And the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, right? Right. So that all the people that was in the camp trembled, right? Right. And Moses brought forth the people of the people out of the camp to meet with God, right? Yeah. And they stood at the neither part of the mount, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Now right. sign, now was all together on smoke because the Lord descended up on it in fire. Now the Lord came down. Amen. Hello? Amen. Amen. 
Right? Right. It said the Lord descended upon it in fire, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Say the smoke that rubber ascended, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. The smoke that rubber ascended at the smoke of a what? Furnace. And the whole mount quaked what? Great. 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 With the voice of the trumpet sounded longer and waxed louder and louder. Moses what? Faith. Faith. God answered him by what? Voice. He spoke to him. God answered him. He didn't say God answered them. No. Him. I ask you a question. Who did God ask? Y'all say all the people. No, it didn't. He answered him. But you got to pay attention to your scripture. And see H-I-M. Oh, oh, oh. Amen, daughter. <laughs> <laughs> say H-I-M, not T-H-E-M. <laughs> and the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mountain. And the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mountain. And Moses went up. The Lord said unto Moses, go down and charge the people lest they break through. Get back down there. They try to break through and see me. They try to see, what are they trying to see through? What are they trying to see through? The smoke. You guys believe it? <laughs> trying to see through the smoke. When the Lord came down, I'm at verse 20. Above the mountain, said, the Lord came down upon the mountain side now on the top of the mountain. The Lord called Moses up to the top of the mountain. Moses went up. The Lord said to Moses, Go down and charge the people as they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. Let the priests also, which come near to the Lord, sanctify themselves. Why tell them to sanctify themselves? Because the priests thought they didn't have to sanctify themselves, thought they was better than the people. He said, you tell the priests what I said, to sanctify themselves <laughs> like I told all of y'all to do. <laughs> he told them that in verse number 14. Moses went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified the people and they washed their clothes. Everybody but who? The priest. You just believe how we you know. You get down in this verse and they say you get down there, tell them priests to sanctify themselves. That's how we know. That's how we know. It said, Moses said unto the Lord, the people cannot come up the Mount Sinai. We always try to tell God what to do. <laughs> God tell us something to do. We turn around and tell God what tell God what what what, what we want him. To do. God tell us what to do. We turn around and try to tell God what to do. God tell us to do something, we tell God, God, that ain't gonna happen, God. The Lord said unto the Lord, people cannot come up to Mount Sinai for you charges us. Satan set bounds about the mountain, sanctify it. And the Lord said unto him, away. Do what I told you to do, get thee down. And you shall come up, you Aaron, with you. We went through this. Because this tells you this, 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 the way it is written, the way it is transliterated, the way it is transliterated. You believe that Moses and Aaron was going up and went through this? And we read it this way. The Lord said unto him, Away get thee down, but let not the priests and the people break through to come up unto the Lord, lest he break forth upon them. You shall come up. You shall come up through your tents. You and every with you. You shall come up. That's in the future. That's in the future. That's future tense. It's not talking about now. How we know it's not talking about now? Verse 25 said, So Moses went down unto the people and spake unto them. What did Moses say to the people? Get back. Get back. Don't touch them out. You know what Moses spake to them? Because God told us what Moses told, because God tell the Lord, excuse me, the Lord tells us why he sent Moses back down. And the Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down, you shall get thee down, but let not the priests and the people break through to come up unto the Lord as he break forth upon them. Then when we get to chapter 20, here we go. I want to show you something tonight. God spake. God spake. That's the one who was talking. God spake. Not Moses. God. God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Every, all through the scripture, all through the scripture, this is what God told them. Every time God got ready to bring evil upon them, 
Every time he got ready to rebuke them, every time he sent the prophet to him, he would tell them, tell them this all the time. He brought them out of the land of Egypt. We went through a lot of these already. Maybe we need to go through some more. We went through a lot of these already. Let me see. Let me see something. So hold your horses. Maybe we'll go through these again. Yeah. Maybe we'll go through these again. Every time God got ready to judge Israel, this is what he told them. This is what he reminded them. Never reminded them of a Levitical law. Never. When he got ready to judge them, when he was here, he was always reminded them that he was the one that brought them and he was the one that brought them <coughs> me, out of the land of Egypt. Uh, look at 1 Samuel 8.8. 8. Let's look at 1 Samuel 8.8. 8. I think we went through this before, but I stopped. Look at 1 Samuel 8.8. 8. Look at 1 Samuel 8.8. 8. Amen. 1 Samuel. <coughs> Let me go through these. 1 Samuel chapter 8. 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse number. Come on. I said 1 Samuel 8.8. 8. Right, church? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Verse 7, chapter 8, <coughs> verse number 8. That's what I said, right? Yeah. 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 According to all, let's look at verse 7. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people, hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. But they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them, according to all their works which they have done since the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, even to this day, what the hell they did? What have they did? They have rejected me. I'm at verse number 7 again. This is where everybody's supposed to be at. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse number 7. The Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken to the voice of the people, and all that they say unto thee. They asked for a king. They asked for a king. You see at the top of your Bible, it says, The theocracy rejected. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken to the voice of the people, and all that they say unto thee. But they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not pray over them according to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. This is how you read it. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, you go back to verse 7 and you read, they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. You do not read the whole verse. You read the last part of the verse. When you, you stop it at the word this date, you stop at date in verse number 8, you go back to verse number 7, and you read, they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. Then you come back to verse number 8 and read, Wherewith they have forsaken me. And served other gods. Yeah. So do they also unto thee. They reject you, Samuel, what? so that you would not reign over them. They do you, preacher, just like they do me. Amen. That's what he just said. Yep. Say, Samuel, they do you just like they do me. So before you reject the preacher, you reject God. Yep. Before you reject the preacher to reign over, you reject God. Before you reject the preacher, you reject God. Human reason don't understand that. Why is it like that? Why is it that you will reject God 
before you reject the preacher. You say, no, I'm not rejecting God. Yeah, I'm do. just rejecting you, preacher. Mm -hmm. Why is it you must, you must reject God first before you reject the preacher? Why? Why, Eric? Thank you very much, Eric, because God sent the preacher. Yes, he did. Preacher. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Because God S sent S the S preacher. Yes, he did. He <laughs> sent Samuel. <laughs> and this is what they don't know. Being blind. That's what it is. Isn't that human reason? Yes, yes. The Lord said unto Samuel, hearken to the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them according to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, they have rejected me that I should not reign over them wherewith they have forsaken me. How did they forsake him? When they rejected him from not reigning over them, they forsook them from the first day they came out of Egypt. Wherewith they have forsaken me Served of God, so do they also unto you. They do you the same way they reject you, so you won't reign over. And they've been doing this since they came out of Egypt. 2 Kings 21. 2 Kings 21. The man. 2 Kings 21. The man. 2 Kings 21, verse number 15. The man. Oh, yes. Yeah. 2 Kings 21, verse number 15. Let's go through this. This is what they did. 2 Amen. Kings 21 and verse number 15. Are we there? Yes. 2 Kings. I got 2 Samuel. You done there? 2 Kings. 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel. What I got? 2 Kings. 2 Kings. 2 Kings. I'll be reading. Read instead of turn the page. 2 Kings 21. 2 Kings 21 and Two. verse number 15. Amen. Because they have done, because they have done that which was evil in my sight and have provoked me to anger since the day their fathers came forth out of Egypt. Even unto this day, they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. That must be added to that. Amen. Because when they chose the king, that's what they did. Because the first time it's mentioned, Eric, this is what I've been telling y'all. It's got to be added that. Yeah. The precedent has already been set. Because... We in second kings, and they ask for a king. So every time we read, since the day that they came forth out of Egypt, you gotta add, Ernestine, they rejected me that I should not reign over them. That must be added every time we read about him bringing them out of Egypt, because that's where it was first spoken at. When they ask for king. So since they ask for king, and at the time that they ask for the king, God said, but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. Every time we read, since the day their fathers came forth out of Egypt, even unto this day they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. That must be right. You gotta, I remember that. You don't remember it, that's on you. But you got to remember that. Because the first time this is said, is said when they ask for a king. Do we understand? Yes or no? If no, let me know. Again, Pastor. Every time a man, mm -hmm. It's called a precedent, man. Okay. And it's already set. All right. That means that when God, when God said that they have rejected him mm -hmm. and that he should not reign over them, that was said in the same context of when he brought them out of Egypt. That said 
in the same context of Exodus chapter 20. Mm -hmm. When he brought them out of Egypt, they rejected him, that, they, that he should not reign over them. Because they complained and they murmured. They did that since they came out of Egypt. So God said they fought and said, done. When they get to 1 Samuel 8, 8, and 8, 6, 7, and 8, mm -hmm. and they ask God for a king, yeah. they ask God, they don't have a king. Mm -hmm. six. They don't have a king. Mm -hmm. Not six. <laughs> they don't have a king. Okay. In 1 Samuel, mm -hmm. right? Right. They don't have a king. First Samuel. They don't have a king. Let me get let me go over that. They don't have a king. When they ask for a king, right. and Solomon tells them that they have done wrong. In verse 6, mm -hmm. they say, But this thing displeased Samuel when they say, Give us a king to judge us. Okay? Right. Yes. The Lord tells Samuel. Mm -hmm. He's talking to Samuel. He's not talking to the people. He's talking to Samuel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These things have to be made clear to y'all because y'all yes, don't do. be paying attention to who he's talking to. Mm -hmm. And I tell y'all this all the time. That's why we have so many. We have, I have to go back and forth with you so much because you don't pay attention who he's talking to. It says, the Lord said unto Samuel. It didn't say the Lord said unto Samuel and the people. No, it didn't. Don't you put that there. It said, the Lord said to Samuel, Samuel, hearken unto <coughs> the voice of the people. What was the voice of the people? Give us a king to judge us. That's the voice of the people. The voice of the people is give us a king to judge us. As a matter of fact, it's in verse number four. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, to Samuel, Behold, you are old, your sons walk not in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. What did they just say? They just said, Samuel, we don't want you to reign over us either. Mm -hmm. and that's exactly what God says. That's exactly what God says in verse number 8. They just said, Samuel, we don't want you to reign over us either. That's what they just said. They didn't say it like you hear me saying it right now, mm -hmm. but they said it not knowing what they say. Just like I be telling you, you said it, and you say, I didn't say that. You did say it. When you said what you said, you said something else. Mm -hmm. When you say what you say, you say the opposite of what you said. Many of you don't be understanding. No. And they said, make us a king to judge us like all the nations. They said, Samuel, we do not want you to reign over us. And that's what God said. We get the verse number, we get the verse number six. They say, but this, but this thing displeased Samuel. When they said, they say they said. And the, and the they is those in verse number Four, then all the elders of Israel, they said, mm -hmm. that's the elders of Israel. But this thing, this plea, Samuel, when they, who was they? The elders. Yeah. When the elders said, give us a king to judge us. When they say, give us a king to judge us, a king is one that reigns. But you know what the problem is? When you see the word king, you don't think rule and you don't think reign. Okay. You don't use your intelligence. You what? think stupid. Because you don't see the word reign there. You say, well, that ain't what he said. When, they, when you say king, yeah. you automatically say you didn't want him to reign over you. A king is one that rule over. So they say, we don't even want you either, Solomon. And God is telling them, they don't know what they're talking about, Solomon. Don't worry about them. They rejected you that you shouldn't reign over. When they ask for a king, they're too stupid to know what they said. That's human reason. He's saying they're too stupid to know what they said, Solomon. They're doing you like they did me, Solomon. Since they, I mean, Sam, they're doing me like they did you, Samuel. Since they came out of Egypt, Samuel, they're too dumb, Samuel, and too stupid to know what they said. When they say, give us a king, Samuel, they have rejected you too. But Samuel, what you just pleased for? They've been doing me like that since they came out of Egypt. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. From the very beginning. 
Samuel, what way and say Samuel? Samuel, slow down. The boy, you had to get me on this. There's one scripture I really had to understood, understand. They didn't reject you. No. They rejected me. That's how I, 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 I know what it means because I had to study it. I went through it. He said, when they said, give us a king, yeah. what they just said is, Samuel, we don't want you to rule over us. Whether they're conscious or aware of what they said or not, you said. That's, that's, it. that's it. Amen. That's that's it. It. That's that's it. It's like if you took sides with those that rejected that's them and left here. If you took sides with them, you said the same thing they said. Amen. Amen. You said the Amen. same Amen. thing. Look, dude, I just said, did you agree? Did you agree? You said it. Oh, well, you agree to one thing, that's you it. said. Mm -hmm. But that's what y'all don't understand. Nope. Because y'all don't see things from, listen, that's because y'all don't see things from God's perspective. That's what you God see does. it from human reason's perspective. You see it from man's perspective. <laughs> you need to pray, God, let me see the scriptures from your perspective. Mm -hmm. Let me ruin mm -hmm. from, your, from your mind and not mine. <laughs> Amen. That's why I teach on human reason. Because we see everything from our own perspective. Yes, we do. We see it from the, the perspective of the United States of America. We see it from the perspective of the education system we come out of. Paul seen everything, I'm reading, Paul seen everything according to the rabbi's perspective. That's all he could see. He could see no more. And I keep saying this to people. That's all you can do. Stop apologizing. Stop making excuses. That's all you can do. You can't do nothing else. Mm -hmm. Stop using that as if you, you keep, I, I apologize. I'm saying this. I'm doing this. I'm wrong. I'm letting it. I'm doing it. Okay. Okay. No. No. Stop that. Stop that. You're being a hypocrite. That's all you can do. Ask God and pray that he show you from his perspective. I'm saying mm -hmm. wrong. I'm looking at it from my perspective. Amen. I'm looking at it from my viewpoint, from my perspective. God, please show me how to come out of my perspective and get rid of my viewpoint and stop seeing it the way I've been taught and the way I've been thinking in this evil, wicked world. That's how we see it. Amen. Okay, so true. Amen. 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 And we won't pray that. Nope. Because we think our perspective is good. We do. Mm -hmm. We won't pray that. I don't want to see nothing from Dennis' perspective. I don't see nothing from my perspective. My perspective is evil. Your perspective is evil. The way you see, the way you understand is evil. Well, where I get this way from? I got this way from the I got this way from the most straightest sect of the of the most I, the most straightest sect of our religion. I laid a back. I live yeah. an American. Amen. Amen. That's all I know. Amen. Well, that's all I can see. Yes, sir. You want to see it from your perspective. That's why, that's why I'm showing you how to read. Mm -hmm. When God gets to verse number 8, he says, according to all the works which the elders of Israel have done since the day that I brought the elders of Israel out of, I, I, and I know it's the elders. I can prove to you he's he talking about the elders. I can take it back to Deuteronomy. Who answered in the book of Exodus? The elders and the heads of the tribe. That's what it told us in Deuteronomy chapter 5. It says the elders and the heads of the tribes. Amen. And the elders been like that since they came out. Out of Egypt. That's why he said the elders. Yes. He didn't say the children. Yes. He didn't say the women. Yes. He said the elders. Yes. Grown folk. Yes. Mm -hmm. The men. The yes. men. Yep. Yep. He said, the Lord said it to Samuel. That's why, that's why I'm showing you how to read it. The Lord said it to Samuel. Hearken unto the voice of the people. Who was the voice of the people? Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together. That's the people. They got one voice. That's why I say voice, because all of them agree. That's why I say voice, because all of them has got to together, and they got one man that jumped up to speak out, and they said, all right, dear, do all of us agree? Yeah. All right, Van, you the one to go to Dennis and tell us. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. Do y'all agree? Yeah. You agree, John? Yeah. You agree, Glenn? Yeah. yeah. You agree, Eric? Yeah. You yeah. agree, Jeremiah? Yeah. You agree, uh, uh, Caleb? Yeah, I agree. I just go along. Everybody else going. I might as well go with him. He might not even truly agree nor is wrong. But he said, um, yeah, okay. He should have shut his mouth. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that mean he put his approval on it? Too. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> this is bad as they are. It was no, they should have said, but there was five of them that didn't agree. Just like he told us in the book of Numbers. It said, Caleb and Joshua had another spirit. They didn't agree with the ten. They didn't agree with the ten. Amen. That's why I showed you the ten times. And so when he get to, get to verse 7, he said, the voice of the people, he talked about the elders of Israel. He said, and all that the elders say unto you, for the elders, he said, for the elders have he said, for they, for they, the elders have not rejected Samuel, but the elders have rejected the Lord, that the Lord should not reign over the elders. According to all the works which the elders have done since the day that I brought the elders out of Egypt, even until this day, wherewith they, the elders, have forsaken me, served other gods, so do the elders also unto you, Samuel. They reject you when they say, give us a king. Wait a minute, you got Samuel. Uh, we don't want him. He said, give us a king. Well, God was telling Samuel, they've been rejecting you since you've been telling them. And then he proved to Samuel. He said, Samuel, let me prove to you they reject it. He said, tell them how the king going to reign over. Samuel get there and tell them how the king reign over. They said, no, 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 we still want a king. He said, the king's going to do that. Solomon treated the children like, treated them bad. All the kingdom, oppressed the widow, the fathers, and all. Why? Because they wanted a king. The reason they was oppressed, because they went to the voting booth. Because they voted Democrat. They wanted Biden. They wanted Trump. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I wonder why they're being treated like they treat. Being oh, treated. Oh, oh. Taxes, everything's finna go up. Everything's steady going up. Somebody got to pay for Florida. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. You said, uh, okay. you said Solomon treated them bad. You meant Saul. Samuel. Uh, you meant Saul? Saul, uh, Solomon treated them bad. Solomon. Yes, I did say Solomon treated them bad. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah, Solomon treated them bad. He made them cooks and confectionaries and bakers and made them do, run his chariots. Did everything to him. Yes, I was me. Because we are going to say he's going to be worse than Solomon. Oh, what you say? We are going to say he's going to be worse than Solomon. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. did. Solomon did treat him bad. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. So I told him what he's going to do. Yes, he did. Solomon treated him bad. Mm -hmm. Go over there and read it and see what Solomon did. Mm -hmm. Go over there and see what Solomon did. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. He said it down here. Look at verse number 13. He said, it, it, it's, and he said, look at verse number 11. Well, let me read this again so y'all can be understanding. When they say, give us a king. He said, give us a king to judge. The Lord said it to Samuel, hearken to the voice of the people. And in verse number 7, Amen. all that they said to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. According to all the works, he's talking to Samuel. He said, Samuel, let me tell you how these people live. Samuel didn't know. He wasn't there when he, he wasn't there when he brought him out of Egypt. He wasn't even born. He didn't know. God said, let me tell you how they is. You don't know him. You don't know him, Samuel. I know him, Samuel. They be like this since I brought them out of Egypt. I know them, Samuel. That's why a man can't tell me nothing. All I got to do is read the word of God. I know you. I know what God said about you. I believe God. I don't believe you. I ain't like that. You wills like that. You will. He said you was like that. And when you told me I ain't like that, that's how he told me you is. You deny everything. You won't take accountability and responsibility for nothing. You're always protecting yourself. That's what he said. Yeah. Yes, sir. I ain't like that. Yes, you will. You just proved it when you said I'm not like that. You just
just prove it when you say, I am not. I am not. So he said, the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken to the words of the people and all that they say unto you, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me. Why? Rejected me. How? That I should not reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me. With this day, that wherewith, wherewith means that, that same day. Wherewith this day, wherewith this day, they have forsaken me and served unto God, so do they also unto you. They reject you, so you won't reign over them, so they can serve other God. That's what they did. They didn't want you to tell them what to do either. They go right there. Hello? So do they also unto you. What do they do to them? They don't serve them. They don't serve us all. So do they also unto you, Samuel. What do they do? They have, they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. Yeah. They do you the same way. When they say what? How do they do them like that when they say, give us a ruler to judge us. When they say give us a ruler to judge us, they were saying, Samuel, we don't even want you to judge us. That's what they said. They say, Samuel, we don't even want you to judge us. So when you read this, you can read down to it. You read down to it, it says, Now therefore hearken to their voice, how be it? Protest solemnly unto them. Show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked the him of the king. And he said, this will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take. You look at verse 13. He will take. You look at verse 15. He will take. You look at verse 16. He will take. You look at verse 17. He will take. One, two, three, four, five times. He will take. 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 Verse number 11. He will take your sons. Verse 13, he will take your daughters. Verse 15, he will take the tenth of your seed. 14, 2, he will take your feet. He's going to take. He ain't going to give you nothing. All he's going to do is what? Take. That's what man does. He's going to give you nothing. He what? Take. Take. That's what he does. He take. He will 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 take. <laughs> he will take. And what do he do? Yes, sir. He can get you not. What you say? What Carol was asking about was 1 Kings 12. Believe me, he will take. 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 You'll never get nothing. Take. You'll take. That's all he does. That's what the king does. Hello? Amen. Don't ask. He what? Take. He will take your son, take your daughter, mm -hmm. take your field, take your vineyard, take your olive yard, even the best of them, and give them to his service. Ain't that something? Yeah. He's going to take it from you. Right. Because they working for him. Right. And he's going to give it to his service. He's going to press the poor. Right. Yes. Sound like. Right now, today. You, had, you, you asked for a king, then. You? <laughs> you asked for a king, then. <laughs> you asked for a king, then. Yes, you did ask for a king. Yes, you did. You ain't one of God. You know you want to God. You ain't one of God to rule over you. It was the day he brought you out of Egypt. Who he did didn't vote. Exactly. You best believe everybody don't vote. We ain't gonna God who didn't know. <laughs> the elders taught us. <laughs> they didn't know. They didn't know. This is our that's why I know this our history. I don't care what nobody said. What'd you say? You said one time we voted. I said that's all it takes. Yeah, that's all. Right. 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 Praise God. Mm -hmm. Yes, she did. When I voted. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> she was in me. Uh-oh. Just, right. like, just like Levi paying tithes. 
Because he was in Abraham. We got all mistaken right there. No, we don't. No, we don't. Oh, y'all don't think. I ain't did nothing. You did. You was in it. Wow. That's what y'all don't understand. Because y'all went out for y'all by the man. Yeah, I know what this did. Yeah. So my man, I didn't do that in the garden. You did. You was in Adam. Dumb bell, you. <laughs> we dumb. We dumb. We dumb. Yes, we are. We are dumb. We are dumb people. Yes, mm -hmm. Like I was telling Carol, they up there and they go they put the satellite in there to bump the asteroid. For what? What you doing that for? Oh, that we might have to save the earth one day. Man, that thing's seven million miles away from the earth. And God had put that there for nothing. He determined the bounds and the habitations of man. He said, you stay down here. You ain't got no business up there. He determined the bounds and the habitations. And he determined for us to be on earth, we ain't got no business up there at all. You up there, you don't hit that out. You don't know why God had that asteroid sitting up in that spot right now. We don't know why. We are serious. You don't know why God had it sitting right there. You go up there and move it. But that, don't, that, te that tease me off. He know why he got it there. You go up there and move it. Don't you to bother that. You ain't got no business up there. You can't even take care of what's down here. What you doing up there? Sad, man. Why do you think I teach on every reason on Thursday? It's just pathetic. It's stupid. Man, it's stupid. He is I said, I determine the bounds and the habitations of every man. That's what he tells us in Acts 17. What are you doing up there? What you, what you bothering up there for? That ain't bothering you. What you doing? We may have to save the earth one day. Okay. <laughs> you wait till he come back with the mouth of the flame. Right? I'm saying you're going to bump him out the way. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to bump him out the way. Because you know they sure are going to try to fight him. Y'all know that, don't you? Mm -hmm. yeah. Look at that stupid. Yeah. What you want, Eric? <laughs> what you saying? They, they gonna do well, 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 well. Right. We don't know what type of effect that's going to have on the earth. Right. And he got it there for a reason. Yes, he do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Didn't a hurricane come right after that? Yep. Yes. Um, yep. We can't say that, call that, that, no, no. that. Don't do that. No. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Okay. Oh, Miss Cleo. <laughs> <laughs> That's something he would say. No, now I'm telling you, stop doing that, Miss Cleo. <laughs> uh, oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> The, the, oh, the soothsayer. Oh, the soothsayer, yeah. <laughs> you don't know, you don't know that. No. That was already ordained. Everything that's happening with that is ordained. You shouldn't be up there bothering that moon neither. <laughs> <laughs> the moon determined the seasons. Yeah. You don't throw everything out of whack. That's what that moon. I know that. Now, let me chop it up, too. Preach! <laughs> Preach! <laughs> Give it a hormone block. Yes, it's disgusting. It is. It is disgusting. Yes, it is. But we've been like this since we came out of Egypt. Amen. God made man upright. He sought out many inventions. Always seeking out something. Always doing something, man. Always. Oh, Instead of what he's supposed to do, and that's to yeah. love the Lord that God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and strength, and love that day. He won't do that. No, 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 no. Won't do that. No, he won't do that. No, no, sir. That's the last thing he's gonna do. Ain't gonna do that. Ain't do it. Don't want to do it. Ain't in him to do it. But we might have to say that. Ain't that crazy? Ain't yeah. that crazy? We may have to save the earth. Mm. We, mm. we Europeans. Mm. Not you, not you, Negro. 
<laughs> with your pain. And we don't believe the God of Abraham. We don't believe y'all God. They don't believe our God. They don't believe the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They don't believe the black man's God. I don't care who get mad because I say it. Amen. They don't Amen. believe our God. We don't, man. They don't believe we don't. our God. No, they don't. Our God sits in the heavens. He does them whatsoever he pleases. He don't lift them to themselves. <laughs> Amen. Up there bothering that man. <laughs> Ain't supposed to be up there. He told me he put you where he wanted you to be. He put every man where he wanted him to be. He put you on the moon, he to put you on the moon, fool. When you go over there and read it, Paul talking to those Europeans. Eh? Go to Psalm 17. Psalm 17. What? 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 You know what? 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 He up there on the bottom. He up there on the bottom. Asteroid. You can't on there. Sit down somewhere. <laughs> 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 you mean Acts 17? Yes, I said Acts 17. Yeah, I'm sorry. Acts 17. Amen. We talking to Europeans. Acts 17, verse number 22. Amen. <laughs> Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hills and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. Wow. The Jews' superstition and they superstition, man is superstition. Man is yes, he is. is. Man, what'd you say? Man is superstitious, period. Thank you very much. Yes, he is. Because the Jews, you look over at Acts 20, you look at Acts 25 yeah. and verse number 19. But had certain questions against him of their own superstition of one Jesus which was dead, who Paul affirmed to be alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. They were superstitious and acting the European superstitious. They didn't want to put their nails. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Men of Athens, I perceive in all things you are too what? Superstitious. Ain't that crazy? Yeah. Well, as I passed back and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this description to the unknown what? Nah. Whom therefore you ignorantly what? Worship. Him I declare unto you. I don't want you to be ignorant. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and what? Earth. Earth. What, what? That, that asteroid there, he wanted that on it. Yes. He wanted it there, he Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Doing of not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything. He didn't need them to walk that move that. No, he, he, didn't. Didn't. he didn't need them to do that. Amen. He Lord. Yes, he, is. he didn't need them to do that. Neither his worship with men's hands as though he needed anything seen, he gave it to all life and breath and all things. And have made of one blood all nations of men from Adam, one blood, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, not in, in the sky. <laughs> he said, on, did he not say on the face of the earth, yes. not in the sky, not on Mars, not on another planet, not on the moon. Yep. <laughs> he just worship with many hands, so he needed what? Anything. anything. Seeing he give it to all life, breath, and all things. What you want to do? Hey, that's the same thing as space exploration. They trying to get up to the mountain. They trying to see what they're not supposed to be looking at. That, wow. That's the same thing in Exodus. You best believe everybody. That's the same thing in Exodus. You're not lying. Wow. Great observation. Oh, you man. trying to see things that you ain't got no oh, business trying to see. Oh, <laughs> oh babe. Wow. Oh, that's the leader that era. And have made of one blood all nations of men. Verse 26, to dwell on the what, y'all? Face, face of the earth. He didn't tell them to come up to the mountain. He told them to stay down at the mountain. He didn't tell them to come up the mountain. Stay on the earth. Mm. Hello? Amen. And have determined the times before appointed. The word before appointed is the word protest. So I gave that to y'all before. Before appointed, just before appointed. That's all. I'm talking about two words. Before appointed is one word. Yeah, all right then, that's what I asked you now. You ain't got to just let me know and put it on the board. Before appointed is one word in the Greek. In your Bible, they got two words, but it's only one. 
So you can't say before. You got to say before appointed. The word before appointed. Before appointed. Is one word. You can't have one word. You just can't have appointed. You just can't have before. It got to be before appointed. There's one word. And it's the word pro tassel. It's one word. It means arrange before. Come for our word pre. And the word arrange. It's pre God had already pre arranged. If he wanted you on the moon, he'd have put you on the moon. If he wanted you on the moon, he'd have put you on the moon. He had already arranged before. When he arranged before, the bounds, hello, of their habitat, did he arrange before? He can't, be, and when he came down to speak, he arranged the bounds before the people did. Yes, he yes. arranged the bounds, told Moses, get down there and tell them, don't they touch that mountain? <laughs> before he came down to fight, he had already arranged the bounds. Yes. yes, he did. He pre bound it. He pre-bound their habitation. Hello? He said, it hath made one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth. Men is supposed to be where? Be where? On the earth. face of the earth. That's what men is supposed to be at. Amen. Not in a ship, not in the sky. On the face of the earth and it determined the times, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Before pointing and the bounds of that that they should seek the Lord. He ain't on the moon. That they should seek the Lord. Did you see the Lord on the moon? Did you think Jesus worked any miracles on the moon? Did you see Jesus? Jesus ain't been to Mars. He made Mars. Jesus wasn't on Mars. There no man on Mars. He didn't die for nobody. No Pluto. He wasn't crucified on Jupiter. Man, it's stupid. We think they're so smart. Right. Just like Carol said, ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They think they're so smart. We went to the moon. Yep. Well, they hit an asteroid something seven million miles away. <laughs> you hit with seven million miles? Come on, they might have to say it earth one day. <laughs> it is African. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> you may have to. And everybody's so happy and jolly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, faith. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We pray, Lord.